Hi, I'm Steve Phillips, Media Manager for Salmo. Today we're out on a canal in the Midlands uh, in the UK. Uh, there's one reason for that, and that's it's very special resident, and that's the Xander. I love fishing for Xander, I've fished for them for years across all the Midlands canals, uh, and the canal we're at today, the stretch has got a very good concentration of them. So the plan is to fish for them with lures and catch a few. Now, the usual method for fishing the UK's uh, canal systems, or anywhere where Xander are, is fishing soft baits. Now that's drop shotting or straight jigging with shads or pintails or um, whatever, whatever soft baits people use. Now that does work, it works very well, but what we want to show you today is the fact that hard baits, salmon hard baits, can work just as well. They need to be worked in a very specific way, mainly because the canals are fairly shallow and they're full of uh, detritus stuff on the, on the bottom from years of people chucking stuff in and silt and all that kind of stuff from weed, uh, and also that they're quite murky. Today the, the canal is very murky, we've had a lot of rain come down over the last couple of days, it's all washed in and it's, it's very brown and murky but we're not put off by that. The laws that we've got today and the, the choices that we've made in terms of uh, the laws we've brought will work just as well as anything else. So let's see how we get on uh, and what fish we can catch. Right, okay, so we started fishing, we're on the canal. I've already covered a, a fair amount of the area that I'm looking at to fish. Um, but the thing with canals is, even though they're, they're quite narrow and they look like small waters, you'll have miles, miles of water either side as it snakes along the, the countryside. And that's, that's a lot of water, that's a big water to cover. If you kind of chop those up and put them side by side, that would be a big still water, a big lake. So the best thing to do, psychologically if nothing else, is to break them up in your head. The area that I want to fish today is kind of broken up naturally anyway. From the bridge down there, down to the, the boat yard just down here. So it's not a massive amount of water, but I do know that this will hold Xander. What we've got here is your kind of regular canal, which goes into a, a basin type area. And the basin type area, because they turn boats around there, is slightly deeper. Now I'd be more hopeful of catching Xander slightly down there, but with, with any water and with any predator, you've got to cover the, cover the ground, cover the water that's in front of you. And that starts with your casting. So you want to fan cast around. So to start with, you get into your swim, you make a cast up the canal, work it, and then cast, even short cast like that, and just break it up into sections. So you're covering a lot of fish. Then move on. You can even overlap when you cast back because when you work your lure back from another spot, uh, you'll be covering the water in a different direction. And that, that can make a difference depending on where the fish are sitting and what direction they're sitting. That's especially true of rivers, but it can be true on canals. Um, so the main thing is, like I say, cover your water. And as soon as you've found somewhere that's holding fish with Xander, there'll normally be more. Right, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the tackle I'm using today, because it does make a difference uh, in terms of how you work the lures and your effectiveness uh, in terms of catching fish. You want a balanced setup um, for working hard baits. Now the rod I'm using today is a Fox Rage prism rod. Uh, it's a medium light rod, up to 14 grams casting weight. Um, now the reason for that is it's got, uh, that I've chosen this, it's got um, plenty of power through the blank, but it's got a, a softer tip. So you can feel everything that the hard bait's doing. So, what I'm after specifically is all the vibration. I want to, I want to know when the law's working. I, I want to know when uh, it's free of, of debris because it will pick up stuff on the hooks in the canals. So as soon as that law hits, hits the surface and I'll, I'll reel in, I can feel it vibrating through the water, through the tip. And then when it hits the bottom, which I want because the, the Xander will be hunting around in that bottom half of water at the moment, um, I'll know when it's hit the bottom because I'll feel a, a smoother, duller, duller feel. And everything is translated back through this rod really, really well. It's a good length for, for the canal. You don't want a long rod because you're flicking in between boats uh, and it's not that wide. And it's just the perfect uh, weight range as well to, to be flicking these lures out. The, the size of the salmos that I'm using today aren't that big, they're not that heavy. They're quite light even compared to soft plastics. So you don't want to be over gunned uh, and you want to get that balance right in terms of uh, having the, the casting ability but also the feel. Uh, and again, the stiffness in the blank that I was talking about allows you to work that lure really well. Um, 
but with a sensitivity of the tip. That's matched up to a 1000 style prism reel. Again, because it's quite light lure fishing, you don't need to go uh, two and a half. You, you can do, but my preference is for a thousand. That's loaded with uh, some thin braid. Uh, we're not after massive fish, and even if we do hook into a double, there's nowhere really for it to go that far, and you, you'll have complete control about uh, control of the fish. One of the most important things uh, down here for me is fishing with a wire trace with hard hard lures. Um, I'll always do it when I'm fishing hard lures, basically just because you never know when a pike's going to show up and the last thing you want to do is leave two trebles and a, and a hard bait in a fish. It's not nice, it's not a nice way for the fish to die so don't do it. Um, people will fish a fluorocarbon with soft plastics and single hooks, that's fine, uh, but not when you're fishing with lots of trebles on these, on these lures, on the hard baits for sal uh, salmon lures. <clears throat> um, but when you're looking at your trace, you've got to consider the weight. These salmon lures are tuned by hand in tanks they're very, very well set up from the box. They go out and they're perfectly tuned. The last thing you want to do is put a trace on that's far too heavy and it'll just pull it down. I'm fishing with floating crankbaits, so you want them to come, to crank down to the bottom and then come up at a pace and that'll be where the, the fish will hit them. The last thing you want is, a, is a, um, a trace slowing that down or even making them sink, especially with the, if you're at range and you've got the weight of the braid as well, which will, will also have an effect on the lure. Uh, you won't get the action, you won't get the effect that you're after. So a very thin trace wire, which I've tied myself with a, a, a raid shore clip and a little swivel to, to cut out any line twist. That's perfectly balanced. It does slow the lure down a little bit, but I'm actually after that today, which I'll explain later. What I'm after is a very slow pop-up rise of, of the lure after it's hit the bottom. Um, so this trace is perfect for that. One of the key things when you're fishing hard baits for Xander, for me on the canals, is to work it as slow as you can. Now it's a balance because you have to put some speed into it to get the lure down to where you think the fish will be, which is at the bottom. But then, because these lures are floating, you hit the bottom and just let them rise. And that is where you want to be as slow as possible. Just a couple of turns, of the reel and then let your tip, just flick the tip, let it work that lure and then let it float back up and you'll be, the lure will be going down to start off with, rising back up, coming down again, rising back up and it's on those rises that you'll normally get the bite um, or when it pauses and then you move it and the fish will have to react because it thinks it's getting away, especially with the smaller zander because they tend to be in shoals uh, and they'll be competitive if they see one. That works to your advantage when they see a, uh, a meal, a potential meal that's going to get away, they'll have to react, otherwise another fish might get it and they might lose it. Right, let's take a look at the lures I'm going to be using today. I've got a, a, a selection of lures, they are all floating and there's a very specific reason for that. Uh, the way I work the lures, I want a floating uh, lure to hit the bottom and then come up, but I'll talk to you about that in a bit. The mainstay of uh, my lures today is the Hornet, and for very good reason. The Hornet is a brilliant lure, legendary. It will catch anything that swims pretty much in all various sizes, and Xander absolutely love it. The model that I'm going to be using the most today is the 4.5 Rattling Hornet. Now there's two reasons for that. First of all, it's the perfect size uh, to imitate the bait fish that are in and around the boats on this stretch of canal. Um, the Xander, like I say, that we're after today, average between two and four pounds, there are bigger ones, but that's the kind of mainstay of the fish that we're gonna be targeting. So 4.5 centimeters is the perfect kind of bait size, run it past their heads, smack, it's perfect size for their mouths. Um, it's also, the Hornet also presents a brilliant profile under the water with that slightly bulbous shape. Uh, it gives them a good target to hit. Now the second reason for using the Rattling Hornet is in the name, and that's the rattle. These aren't like the normal Salmo lures that are, uh, have a foam body. These are actually hollow. They have two plastic sides and are welded together. And inside, as well as the long cast system that these have, there's plastic beads, or glass beads, sorry, 
they're amazingly loud, cast them out. On a quiet day, we've got a road here, you can't really hear it, but on a very quiet day, you can hear these things under the water rattling around. Now in the murky conditions that we've got here with all the, the rainwater that's gone in and the general kind of muddiness of the canal anyway, that can make a real difference. So as well as the really tight vibration that the uh, Hornet gives, it's really tight, gives off loads of uh, vibration through the water. You've also got that rattle going on, which is, I don't know if you can hear that, really quite loud and it gives the Xander something to home in on if they can't see the law, which in the, the dirty conditions they can't always do. I've got those in a multitude of colours. Sticking with the Hornets theme, if I wanted to go for slightly bigger fish and there are some in here, like I said, there's doubles that come out of here, or I want to present a slightly bigger profile in the water, something that will get their attention uh, and still give them something to hit. We've got the 5.5 Rattling Hornet, again using it for exactly the same reasons, the tight wiggle, uh, the profile and also the, um, the rattle inside. This is just slightly bigger by a centimetre, hence the 5.5 and the 4.5. Again, not, not a bad mouthful for, it, for the Xander that we're after today. I do prefer the 4.5, but this is a good fallback. Now, both these Hornets will dive down pretty quickly. And what I'm after, uh, when I'm casting out, is for them to dive down as quick as possible, hit the bottom, and then allow them to float back up. In some cases, that's not always possible because with a hard bait, you can't just cast it out and a floating hard bait, you can't just cast it out and wait for it to sink directly down next to a boat or next to a wall. You have to work it, and by the time it hits the bottom, it's quite a way away from cover where the Xander might be hiding. So, in those circumstances, this little jobby helps. This is a Hornet 4 SDR. The SDR standing for super deep running. They've got a, a much longer bill as you can see and this gets them down a lot quicker. Now it seems a bit strange to, to fish with such a big uh, bill and a, a fast diving law in a canal that's probably at its deepest down there you're probably looking about seven or eight foot averaging in the narrow sections about five to six foot but what I'm after I'm not after it to run at that depth I'm after it to get down as quickly as possible and start working so I'll get this tight to a, a, a feature such as a boat or a wall crank it right down, it'll go down a lot quicker than these other hornets, and then I can start letting it float up and doing it again to get their attention. So that's the hornets. Another great option for my canal fishing for Xander, hard bait wise, is this Executor 5. They don't dive as quick as the hornet, but what they do is offer a, uh, a different profile. So this is slimmer and sleeker, and sometimes that can make all the difference when the Xander have tuned into uh, a different kind of bait fish, so they might go after perch with a hornet and be after that or be after their own little zander fry or roach with this and it can make a big difference. Lure anglers will know that once a predator is tuned into a very specific uh, bait fish uh, then that is all they want. It's very strange sometimes you can present something that's completely different shape right in front of them they won't have it because they want a specific type of, of bait. Um, I work these exactly the same way as the hornets, these are floating lures so they'll crank them down again and let them float up. And it's normally, when they float up, you'll get the hit. Now, another good option, uh, if the Xander are in a different kind of mood, uh, again, a floating law is the Minnow 5. These don't dive as deep as the Hornets and the Executors. In fact, they won't normally get to the bottom here. Um, but what they do is give a faster running, uh, tight vibrating law with a very slim profile, even though that's five centimetres, the same as, uh, well, in the middle of the 4.5 and the 5.5 Hornets, it looks like a much smaller meal to the Xander. It looks like a proper fry fish. Um, and when they're, they're up in the water and moving around and hunting down bait fish, this can work really, really well, but it, you have to have the right conditions. I don't think it is the right conditions today. I think they're just milling around on the bottom and, and quite still, but you never know, they could switch on at some point as they do, and this could be the law for the day and at that point you're glad you got it with you. Right, so they're the lures that I'm using. It's time to put them into practice and see if we can catch a fish or two. Right, so there we go. Just running the UV Orange Hornet 4.5 down the side of this barge here. And this very small Xander has nailed it. You hit it on the paws, just, um, just as the lure was rising up. And it was a good take, he proper smashed it. 
and there he is. Lure's caught in the net. Oh, lure it wasn't a very good hook hold, in fact. Oh, it wasn't, wasn't too bad. But there he is. He's probably pound, pound and a half. He is one of the smaller Xander I've caught recently, but he's a beautiful looking little fish. Even though the water's really murky, he's got some great colours on him. The sheen of the blues and the golds is a typical canal Xander. And being this size, I think there's probably going to be a few more down there. So I think it's probably worth getting him back. This lure's obviously working, so I won't change colour. Uh, running it past the boat again and see if anything pops out. I think it's obvious that the this is where there's six boats moored up next to each other, so it's fairly deep cover for them to get right across the canal. It's just slightly wider here as it goes into the boat yard. So I think the bait fish are underneath there, the Xander underneath there, and he was just on the edges. So there could be some bigger fish further back as well. It's just tempting them out on the lures. So let's get him back and see if we can get some more. Well, that has been a frantic five minutes. Just casting out, there he is, casting out an executor, five centimetre, in a hollow shiner, down the side of this boat. I've had two fish. So I've got two Xander in there, like peas in a pod. The first one came out, in exactly the same lure, got him unhooked, stuck him in there. We had another camera ready, but I thought I'll have another cast because when you normally find ones under, you'll find a few, especially at that size. And then straight away, bang, this one I think looks slightly bigger. Only just like ounces in it. So I'm gonna get him unhooked and we'll have a look at both of them. And that's, uh, I think that's a great end to the day by the look of it. Well, there you go, two beautiful looking Xander. They're not the biggest sand you're ever gonna see, but they are good looking fish. Uh, all caught on the Salmos. Uh, earlier we had one on the Hornet. These two came on an executor. Like I say, just fish nice and slow and deep and hit on the paws when you allow it to float back up. So we're gonna put these back and then call it a day. We might have a couple more casts on the way back to the car and if we catch anything big, we'll probably be back. But uh, that for me, is a day. It's been a great day's fishing. Love fishing the Salmos. There we go.